Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using managed identities to connect to blob storage. Let's go. Now in terms of why this episode is important, uh, managed identities allow you to establish trust between Azure services, which is pretty important. So if we think about logic apps, we can use managed identities with some connectors so that we don't have to manage or maintain secrets. Now this is often an area of contention for some customers as they're concerned that someone could copy and paste a SAS key or a, an endpoint connection and then use it from an unauthorized service. Now, you do get some protection if that particular service supports VNet, now you're restricting access to that VNet, but just in general, people get a little bit concerned with those SAS keys that typically have some sort of like time to live or expiration date and now you need to manage it. And so what we can now do is use managed identities, establish that trust, and then basically give that trust between two different services, in this case, Logic Apps and Azure Blob Storage. The problem with this is not all services support managed identities, but Blob Storage is one of them. So let's take a look at what are the supported scenarios for managed identities. So here's a list, uh, this is from the Microsoft documentation. So if we're thinking about Azure Logic Apps standard, and that is the SKU that I'm using for these demos, is we've got built-in HTTP and HTTP plus webhook. Then on the other side of the managed connectors, we've got things like automation, Azure Automation, Azure Event Grid, Key Vault, which I've showed before. Uh, we do have that up on the channel. Azure Resource Manager, HTTP plus Azure HTTP, AD, SQL Server, and of course, Azure Blob Storage. Now, I will show this in the portal, the Azure portal, but just to give you a little bit of a preview. What I've got here is I've got my Azure Logic App standard instance. And if I want to enable managed identity, what I need to do is click on the identity link in the left nav, and then go ahead and turn the status on. And what this will do is this will essentially register our Azure Logic App standard instance as an object inside of Azure AD. And so that's what's happening here. We're going to have a principal ID that's created for us. Now, this in itself is not enough. Now what we need to do is provide this identity, our Logic App instance here, standard instance, with some sort of Azure role assignment. And so we'll go ahead and click on that button. And when we do that, what we're able to do is we'll have to click this button again here. We'll have to select our subscription. We will go ahead and assign our Azure Logic App standard instance, basically a role against a specific uh, resource. Now, I need to choose the scope. There's a few options here. Uh, I'm going to choose storage. I'm going to have my subscription selected. Then I need to provide a resource itself. Now, in this case, this is going to be uh, Azure Storage, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, assign it to uh, this specific resource itself, OC Chat Transcripts, which I've just repurposed from another demo. And then I need to provide a role. And so there's a variety of different roles that can be chosen here. Obviously, use least privilege. And that's what I've done here. I've gone ahead and assigned Storage Blob Data Contributor, meaning I can write and read from this specific uh, uh, resource, this OC chat transcripts resource, and uh, I can't manage it, and that's okay because a logic app probably shouldn't be managing the storage itself. So that's how we go ahead and assign this. And then if we go look at OC chat transcripts resource, we will find that our logic app with the identity I showed you on the previous screen now um, has that specific role, and so it can go ahead and and connect and so we don't necessarily have to touch blob storage at all to make this work um, this is going to do this for us all within the context of this standard instance of a logic app now when we will go ahead and create a connection inside of Azure logic apps we're going to change our authentication type instead of using connection strings or keys we're going to go ahead and use managed identity and so that's going to allow us to go ahead and connect to this specific resource and uh, be able to use it. And so that's how we'll create our connection. We'll need to select 
Logic Caps Manage Identity from the dropdown itself. And then what'll happen is we'll go ahead and be able to run this and see that we can connect to Blob Storage. So let's go ahead and take a closer look inside the Azure portal. Okay, in the Azure portal, got my Logic Caps Standard instance here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Identity. This was the toggle I need to turn on. By default, it'll be set to off. I'll get a principal ID assigned, and then I can go ahead and assign a specific role. So I need to go ahead and uh, have my subscription selected, and then I can go ahead and add a role assignment. Now, in this case, this is what I've gone ahead and assigned uh, to my managed identity. So this is a, a breakdown, more granular, of of what I can go ahead and do. But if I needed something else, I can go ahead and click on Add Role Assignment, then select a specific scope. So we've got Subscription, Resource Group, Key Vault, Storage, SQL. In this case, it's Storage. Then I can go ahead and select a specific resource. So it's gonna go ahead, iterate through the various storage accounts within my subscription that I uh, have access to. And then these are all of the various roles. So you can go ahead and select the one that makes most sense for you. If you only needed say reader read access you could go ahead and select read but really up to you from from that perspective now when I go ahead and set this up um, if I head over to my storage provider and then I can go into identity and access management control here I can go ahead and look at the role assignments and sure enough we will find our logic app standard edition instance and that it has a storage blob data contributor role. So that's how we know that this has worked. Uh, I don't have to change anything inside of my storage account. Uh, that was taken place from the Logic Apps area itself. So let's go look at the workflow side of things. So I've got a, a workflow defined already called Upload Blob Managed Identity. Let's head into the designer itself. And here is the action that I'm using. So what I've done here is I'm using a system assigned managed identity connection. Now, if I wanted to create a new one just to show you what this looks like, um, what I would go ahead and do is change this drop down to be managed identity, then provide a name for our connection. So I don't need to do that. Once that's established, I need to go ahead and provide the name of my storage account and then the folder path, right? So this would just be the containers that exist uh, inside the storage account itself. And then go ahead, provide some sort of, uh, you know, content name and the content itself. Now, all I'm doing here is I've got just a simple scenario where I'm gonna post hello world as my content, and then I'll go ahead and upload it to this blob. And we'll do so using the managed identity connection. So I can go ahead and run this. Since it's a recurrence, I can just go ahead and run the trigger and then it'll just take a second or two to run. And then sure enough, we can go ahead and check out the run history and see that we were able to successfully connect to our blob storage and go ahead and provide our message here. All right, that concludes another video for this week. Thanks for going and checking it out. Like, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Go ahead and take care of that. And if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Thanks again for checking this out. We'll see you again soon. Take care.